Gentlemen, and welcome to Jacksonville, Florida, at George H. Hodges Field, the Bulls School, for the SELC Championship between the number five ranked Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, second in the SELC, versus the number 14 South Carolina Gamecocks, number three in the SELC North Division, meeting once again consecutive years in the SELC final. Nick Harvey and J.D. Harkey with you as the Yellow Jackets win the opening faceoff. They march it downfield. A quick shot, and they score. Georgia yeah. Tech. If, uh, if you're in white, you love it. If you're in black, you don't. Uh, but fast start to fast start to an exciting game. Finish off Championship Sunday. Well, the first goal goes to Aaron Pizchek for the Yellow Jackets, and it was an opening faceoff win for Georgia Tech. They marched it right downfield, found the open man on the near side wing, and he fired it to the top side on the far side for Alex Petrich. Will Frith will gather possession this time for the Gamecocks. Plays a pass up to Carson Healy, and now the Gamecocks in action on offense. The, uh, the faceoff is definitely going to be a game within the game throughout the day today. Uh, both these guys are, are very, very uh, talented and uh, qualified specialists uh, for each of their respective squads. So it'll be a battle. Yeah, Pizak this year, 224 for 132, and Frith at 193 and 88. As the Gamecocks start to cycle the ball around in their offensive zone, Max Rittenmeyer. Has it on the near side. Plays a pass to Kevin Sansone. He fakes the shot. Goes to Johnny Stanton. Stanton comes up top. Goes to Rittenmeyer. Rittenmeyer fires a shot. Went wide of the crease. Don't mind that take. Uh, you know, got to dial in the location a little bit better and put it on frame. But a uh, uh, good bit of space on the back side of the D there after they got to move in a bit. Max Rittenmeyer once again on the near side. Steps to the far lane now on the near field. Sends it to X, now to the far side of the net. Looking for an opportunity here. The Gamecocks couldn't get the shot away. A nice check from the Georgia Tech defense. Ball is on the ground. Couldn't be collected by the Gamecocks. So now the Yellow Jackets advancing the other way. And that pass bounces off of a stick check. But possessing are the Yellow Jackets. It's Max Lucas. And a whistle blown for, it looks like offsides is going to be called against Georgia Tech. So the Gamecocks will get possession. Transition. Yeah, uh, Georgia Tech's bench uh, not happy with that call. And, uh, you know, just reading body language, they were pointing forward and asking the official to count ahead. Uh, you know, when you're talking about offsides, um, especially with the way that so, such fast substitutions in lacrosse, you're, you're looking to see if there's an advantage, uh, not necessarily if there's too few guys on the backside. Kevin Sansone operates on the far side, sends it to X. Now the Gamecocks, it's out to Pat Riley. He shoots for the near side and scores! Tie game! Riley, a five-goal performance yesterday, picks up right where he left off, coach. Hey, you know, Pat Riley is definitely uh, the guy. He's the engine that makes this offense run uh, for the Gamecocks. Uh, I'm sure he feels good about getting on the board early. Um, and gives him confidence, gives the team confidence, and uh, it's a one-to-one -one game. It's, we're uh, shaping up to being a real exciting one so far. 12:44 still to play in the first, and we've got a 1-1 game here in Jacksonville. The SELC final, a rematch from last year. If the same situation, essentially, for the Gamecocks, too, having lost to Georgia Tech 12-7 during the regular season back on February 24th, now meeting them in the finals for the SELC championship. Uh, a great ground ball by number 55 for Georgia Tech. Really good to uh, uh, scoop it and handle the pressure. Uh, and then he, he tried to get rid of it to a teammate and couldn't quite complete it. So the Gamecocks back on O. I believe that but was Alex Lee. Great, there. great ground ball by that young man. Here's the Gamecocks looking for another opportunity here. From X, it's Coleman Smith. Dances out to the far side. Now back up top for Max Rittenmeyer. Rittmeyer steps to the center, didn't like the lane he had, plays it to Riley, Pat Riley, to Johnny Stanton, Stanton, maneuvering on the far side, plays it back to Riley, now Sansone, dodges, took a spill off the turf, sends it down low for Trenton Wiley, 25 seconds on the shot clock, Wiley pivots to the far side of the crease, looking for a pass in front, had deflected off of a stick, 
and looks like it's going to head right to the sidelines. South Carolina ball, 16 seconds on the shot clock. Yeah, got to go quick here uh, to manufacture a decent shot. Johnny Stanton will start it out. Steps from the far side now to the center, looking for a lane. Couldn't find it. Eight seconds. He got tied up. Has the shot bouncing but missing wide. Three seconds on the shot clock. It'll have to be a quick dish and a shot here. Coleman Smith will throw it away instead. And Georgia Tech will advance with possession here. And, yeah, that's a smart play. Uh, th throw the ball away late in the shot clock so that you can set up your ride, get your personnel on to play D, and not have to scramble on the transition. Well, and just as you mentioned it, a missed pass and an error from the Yellow Jackets gives the Gamecocks possession again. Teddy Russell had a pass forward, now a cross. And Josh Jansen feeds it to a wide-open man. He couldn't settle the ball. It was Coleman Smith. Had a wide open look, but a low pass from Josh Jansen misses its mark. And here's another turnover from the Yellow Jackets. The Gamecocks scoop up the ground ball and yep. take back possession. A little bit sloppy in our uh, transition play in the middle third of the field. Uh, both teams are going to want to clean that up. Uh, Coleman Smith, I think, is going to want to uh, hopefully has a, an opportunity to get back. Um uh, yeah, this is the right call. The official was counting to make sure uh, Gamecocks were offside. It's going to white. So it'll be Georgia Tech ball, an error from the Gamecocks. Both sidelines to this point seeming a little bit quiet, still trying to feel each other out, having not seen each other now for two months. But the Yellow Jackets in business, operating offensively. Here on the near side, it's Brooks Barrow. He dodges past a man. Had a little bit of room. Didn't like what he saw. And it's Asher Wagnon played a pass across. Looking for an opportunity. The shot deflected by the defense. And Teddy Russell will retrieve the loose ball. Gamecocks will try to advance here. Cade Leggio sends a far pass. Connects with his man. Now the Gamecocks in the transition here. Looking for an opportunity to capitalize. Look. Donnie Ryan. Looks like it might have been an ill-advised pass, but, oh, man, yeah, he can't throw it better than that right to his guy and uh, just clears the defender. But Teddy Russell on that play, uh, number 10 for the Gamecocks in black, uh, is, is kind of a quiet assassin on defense and makes a great, great poke check to jar the ball loose. Now at X, it's the Gamecocks once more on offense. Pass out to Johnny Stanton, feeds it across to Drew Bell. Juan Bell makes a nice cut, fires the shot up high, and just missed the net. Had he found it, there's a good chance that might have gone. Gamecocks once again from X. Javon Johnson, he faces a check from the defense there. Looking for an opportunity, feeds the pass across from an awkward angle, and the ground ball scooped up once again by the Yellow Jackets. Hudson Higgins will carry it over midfield. He has speed. Looking for an, an outlet pass, he gets one. Now the Jackets will settle things down to get their offense set up. Uh, good, clean ground ball by Georgia Tech, but great hustle uh, by the Gamecocks to prevent it turning into transition. Sam Eck with possession for the, the Yellow Jackets. Eck had room, feeds a pass across. Here's the shot down low for the wide side. Just misses Matthew Seifert there. Looking for the goal, Seifert with a couple goals in last night's game against the Gators in their victory, has 13 points on the year, his sixth goal mark yeah, for the, the Yellow Jackets. The freshman number seven for, for White uh, was all over the place last night, playing O, playing D, play, in transition. He did a lot for them, so um, good right. save by him right there. But yeah, That was a good stop from Seifert, but it did go back to the Georgia Tech side of things. Now Parkin can't catch up to his man. Here's a low shot blocked by Sigilski. He felt that one. You could see him kind of trying to shake that one off. Georgia Tech once again. It's like Devin Ron on the far side. Ron steps to the middle. Pass across. Here's the shot. Once again blocked by the Gamecock defense. Cade Leggio got his body on that one. And the Gamecocks with some gritty defense so far here. Getting in front of shots early. Nick Witten fired that one at. Three seconds on the shot clock. Stepping down low. They're not going to get the opportunity. Gamecocks will take possession. 
Nice defensive effort from South Carolina. Jack Parkin, Jack Parkin will carry it over midfield to Javon Johnson. Any anytime you can get the other team to uh, expire the shot clock without uh, a decent attempt on the frame is uh, is a, a big win for the D. Um, it seemed like Georgia Tech had manufactured some good opportunities. They just couldn't put it on frame. So the Gamecocks once again on offense, a 1-1 game with 6.50 to go in the first quarter. Pat Riley will roll a pass up top. There for it is Kevin Sansone. To the far side, Rittmeyer. Cuts down low, looking for a return pass. Gets it to Stanton, now Sansone. Sansone sends it to X, Coleman Smith. Give and go behind the net. Riley looking for the turnaround shot. Hits the body of the Georgia Tech goaltender. That's Zagrobony, Zagrobony for Georgia Tech. Coming in with a 3.063 goals against average and a .617 save percentage on the year. The Yellow Jackets advance over midfield. Looking for an opportunity here is Pierce Quarles. Sends a pass to the middle. Loose ball. Bounces to the far side. Georgia Tech couldn't find anything there. Max Lucas played a pass down low. Quarles will settle it down. Now the far side. Played it over to Ron. Ron sends it to Barrow. Farrell looking for a chance in the middle. Instead goes to the far side. Here's the shot. Rings wide of the net. 29 seconds to go on the shot clock. Georgia Tech on the attack here with 5.34 to play in the first. A 1-1 game. Yeah, 10 minutes in, it seems like both teams are still probing a little bit, you know, trying to figure out what they're doing well today and, and what the opponent's trying to do, trying to make them do. Farrell fires a high shot. Awkward angle there, but over the top of the net. Georgia Tech with 18 seconds on the shot clock. Over to the far side. Pass goes to Quarles. And he'll make a nice spin move. Gets past one man. Checked it the second time. Here's a pass across. What another great move from the Yellow Jackets. But the Gamecocks got in the way defensively of that second opportunity and take back possession. Josh Jansen in transition. Plays one to the far side. Johnny Stanton will hold and settle for substitutions. Stanton on the far sideline to Trenton Wiley, now Kevin Sansone. Back to Wiley, he'll settle it up top. Gamecock offense looking to find the back of the net for the second time in this game, break the deadlock. 439 to go in the first. It's Riley, now Sansone. To the far side, Wiley sends it to Stanton. Stanton will come across to the middle. Didn't like what he had. Faces a check from the defensive midi. Now he has room to shoot. He scores! Ooh. Johnny Stanton, low to high on the far side shot. The Gamecocks lead by one with 4.21 to go in the first. That was a heck of a pull by Johnny Stanton out of Gonzaga. Uh, you know, it looks like uh, it, it, for a second as he's rolling back to his left, Georgia Tech has a slide coming quickly, and they, they timed it well, but uh, Johnny sees it. He's got his eyes up, changes direction again, gets his hands free, and really sticks that one home. And again, the importance of this one today, South Carolina looking to win and get in to Austin for the national championship. The Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets pretty sure to find their way to Austin. And off with of the holding. face -off. Withholding the call on Georgia Tech, number 11 does not like the call. He says he was being, he had his wrist being held by the uh, Gamecock faceoff man. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a tough call. It's it's a tough call to make as an official, and uh, it, it's you know, it's a scrap in there. It's a wrestling match for the ball. So we'll see how that plays out. But again, uh, true to form, that's going to be a battle all day. Coleman Smith. To the far side for Stanton. Now Sansone over to Rittenmeyer. Gamecock shuffling around on offense. Rittenmeyer on the near side. Sends it to Smith at X. To the far side now, Wiley to Sansone. Sansone has room. Didn't like what he had. Turns back the other way with the pivot. Heads to the alley. Feeds that up top for Stanton. Stanton had a little bit of space. 30 seconds left on the shot clock. Stanton. 
pass to X. Smith in front just missed. Wiley on the chance. Rittenmeyer couldn't collect the ground ball there. It's sent all the way down by the Yellow Jackets. That ball going to go out of bounds. <coughs> the Gamecocks will get possession back. They'll try to advance once again. Shot clock still at the final 10 seconds here. Now Petrish will send it across. Pedal, or handled by Russell, rather. Wiley looking for a chance here. Down in front, Riley in front. Save was made as the shot clock expired. Not sure if it would have counted had it gone anyways. But it was tight right there in the crease. There's a nice interception from Trenton Wiley. He read it. But the ground ball goes to the Yellow Jackets. Georgia Tech with possession once more. Max Lucas and the Georgia Tech attack. Trying to even things up. Aiden Bedwell has it on the near side. Plays it to the far end for Devin Ron. Ron has room. Sends a pass across. Here's the shot. Not a lot of speed behind it. Petrich made the save. Still loose in front of the crease. Swallowed up by the defense. Legio helps Petrish out there. And he'll play a pass. Bounces into the chest of Ashton Reich. And the midfielder will advance over midline. Uh, nice stand. play nice play by Reich to use his body to keep the ball in front of him, not let it uh, fly out of bounds and then collect it and just leg it out. Good, okay. good clear there. Harry Carswell comes on for the offense. Drew Long Bell with him as substitutions. Timeout called by South Carolina. So the first time out of the game goes to the Gamecocks with 143 left in the first. And coach, what's your perspective here with this early timeout? Uh, you know, I mean, uh, you can't keep them going out, out after halftime. So um, in the first half, you can be a little bit loose with your timeouts. And uh, coach probably thought, uh, Coach Candela probably thought we're a little bit too much back and forth, want to settle in. Uh, got a good chance here with a uh, almost a full cl full shot clock to go ahead two goals. That would be that would be big early in this game. Um, you know, and not a bad call, and uh, he still has one in his back pocket for the rest of the half. Well, and there you go. I mean, 54 seconds, like you said, still on the shot clock for the Gamecocks, and obviously Trevor Wiley here with the offense going to try to to get something going for the Gamecocks, and we we you know. <laughs> We talked about it a little bit yesterday, but Wiley's call in overtime for the Gamecocks. That that play call from South Carolina was uh, phenomenally done and executed well by the attack for the Gamecocks to get the win well, over I, Georgia. I will point out uh, from a coach's perspective, uh, you had Donnie Ryan, uh, who's a great young man uh, from Long Island. He had played early in the second half um, and had a play where maybe he uh, forced it a little bit and um, – didn't see him much more of him throughout the course of that second half until that overtime period and he came in out of the timeout and he's a big body guy he's a, he's a uh, you know a, a large stature uh, offensive player and so he set the down screen that freed Pat Riley coming up for his left hand and uh, was able to catch and shoot without anybody in his hands Riley was because of Donnie Ryan's screen and uh, kudos to Coach Wiley for setting that up. It was uh, a great call. As we resume play here, it's Drew Lom Bell. Thank you for that great breakdown, Coach Harkey. With 45 seconds left on the shot clock, the Gamecocks operating in the offensive zone once more. It's Drew Lom Bell. The pass from Javon Johnson. Now Pat Riley looking for space. Heads to the middle, passes it to Stanton. He'll send it down low. Looking in the middle for Johnson. He got pushed. Now Riley fires a shot and a stick save. Right into the pocket made by the Georgia Tech goaltender. That was Zagrobelny again. Good save. And a, a good a good stop for the Georgia Tech netminder. I think that might have been Coleman Smith with the feed to the inside. And he, if he had made it right away, he had Javon Johnson, uh, number 77. Uh, but he held on to it a little long. He stared it down, and he made the pass after looking at him. Uh, and, of course, uh, Georgia Tech is a – very good defensive team. Uh, they collapsed on that. Uh, Riley was lucky to get the ball bounced to him, just couldn't get the shot to fall. 
For the Yellow Jackets operating offensively once again. 32 seconds to play in the first quarter. With time on the shot clock. A nice pressure from the Gamecock defensive midi on the back side of the net. It's up top. Johnson there to defend. And the Yellow Jackets looking for one last ditch effort here before the quarter ends. Comes down loose. Four, 13 seconds to go. Ball comes out again. A late hit there behind the play it looked like. And they get the call, so South Carolina gets possession back with seven seconds to go in the first quarter. And it looks like the Gamecocks will elect to hold the final second here. And after the first quarter, we're through 15 minutes, 2-1 to one South Carolina over Georgia Tech in this SELC Finals rematch between two juggernauts in the Southeastern Lacrosse Conference. Once again, Nick Harvey and Coach J.D. Harkey with you. With all the action live, we appreciate you all tuning in. This is a fun one on tap here. Only through the first 15 minutes, I can only imagine what the next 45 hold, Coach. I'm excited. I mean, uh, you know, both these teams have uh, a rich history. Um, and, you know, I would say over the past decade, uh, a, a slugfest going back and forth, have seen each other. Uh, multiple times a year uh, for for a couple years in a row now um, and you know, it's 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 always uh, very difficult to beat a team twice in a season uh, you know I wouldn't be surprised if um, well obviously the, the Gamecocks are up one here at the end of the first quarter there's no question that uh, Georgia Tech will continue to make this a game. Uh, they're a disciplined group. Uh, they're a very talented and deep group. So I think we're in for uh, a barn burner. It's definitely going to be an action-packed, high-intensity game. Here in Jacksonville at the Bowl School, George H. Hodges Field, the site for the SELC Championship. And again, this is a win and you're in automatic bid for the SELC Champion. And South Carolina knocking off the number one seeded Georgia Bulldogs yesterday in overtime. Pat Riley, the game winner there. Five goals yesterday. He has one today. As we get set for the second quarter, both teams back on the field. We'll get the face off for Will Fritt. Opposite of him, believe that is his check again. Two outstanding young faceoff specialists. I believe, uh, I could be mistaken, but I believe Coach uh, Lovick uh, let me know that that young man is Pycheck. Pycheck. Okay, like that. Well, good to get those pronunciations. A lot of times coaches pregame are so locked in, they don't have a lot of time to spend conversating. The Gamecocks got the opening face off of the second quarter, up 2-1. to one. Operating now on the left side of the field. And it's Johnny Stanton on the near side. Rulon Bell sends it up top for Max Rittenmeyer. He looks eager. Takes a step down the far alley. Sends it to X now. Smith out in front. Fed it to right in the crease for Trenton Wiley. And a big time save. Big save. By a Grobelny. Big save. Now the Yellow Jackets with a quick transition. Say, oh, that went in the back of the net. It looked like it came in and out of the stick of Petrish initially, but that did go over the shoulder of the Carolina netminder and off the top bar and out. Yeah, it was quick, uh, quick, but I, I think the officials has the right call. It definitely, uh, definitely shook the frame of the net. If that wasn't, if it wasn't in the goal, it was off the crossbar. And you know, uh, lacrosse fans will remember a couple of years ago a phantom goal. Um, called for the University of Maryland against Virginia in the national championship tournament, uh, NCAA Division I. Uh, the replay showed that it wasn't actually a goal, but it was called a goal on the field. Uh, you know, cert but that one certainly looked like a goal, and it was called as such. Face off, one by the Gamecocks. Will Frith comes forward. His stick got tied up with a defender. Now the Gamecocks will have chances to get substitutions on. Charlie King 
the long stick midi will play a pass over to Pat Riley and the Gamecocks in business offensively. Charlie King, another guy worth talking about here. The long stick midi with 50 ground balls on the season. A big force for the Gamecocks. They get set up on offense. Looks like Drew Long Bell on the far side. Sends it to X. Played now to Stanton. He's going to take the shot. It was blocked by the defender, and he's feeling the effects of it. And they're going to get a whistle for the injured player. I couldn't tell if that rang in his ear hole or, or off of uh, his rib, ribs and body, so to speak. But the way that he was moving, you'd, you'd think that might hit his head and rattle them a little bit. Hopefully he's not concussed. Um, but, you know, you, your teammates love you when you uh, block a shot from even getting to the cage. Um, I'm sure he'll, he'll get some fist bumps and, and – uh, cheers from his teammates, but uh, the coaching staff is going to want to make sure that uh, his head is okay and he's good to go. Yeah, it was Hudson Higgins with the big-time block for the Yellow Jackets, so they get a substitution on. But South Carolina will go back to offense here. Johnny Stanton will start with possession, and it looks like the goaltender communicating with the head official. Everything looks to be sorted out. Now Johnny Stanton. We'll get things going for the Gamecocks. Played it quickly up to Max Rittenmeyer, who sent that to Drew Lombell. Now Pat Riley on the far side. Trenton Wiley and Coleman Smith also on the field for the attack for South Carolina. Now Rittenmeyer back to Lombell. Lombell on the far side, cuts to the center, has room. He likes to shoot, and the high stick side shot. An easy save, that one for Zagrobelny. Yeah, a bunch of these, he's been making great saves, but a bunch of them have been to his stick side, which was an issue for the Gamecocks early in the game against Georgia. And uh, they sort of figured it out later in the game. We'll see uh, what they're able to do in this game. But you can't you can't shoot to a goalie stick side high. It's, uh, you know, it just it's making their job a lot easier. Here's Quarles off the pick, sends a pass down low. A little bit of a pick and roll there from the Yellow Jackets. Didn't quite work to the effect that I believe they wanted it to. 12-20 to go in the second quarter. 40 seconds on the shot clock for Georgia Tech. A 2-2 game. Ron had it. Sent it quickly across to the far side. Now it's Nick Witten. Witten steps forward, takes the shot off the pipe. Did not go to the back of the net. And South Carolina collects the ground ball off of that shot, and we'll get a chance to advance here. Cade Leggio steps up field. The big body defender sends a pass to Javon Johnson. And the Gamecocks do get the transition, a close one there for South Carolina. A good handle by Johnson to come back and, and collect the ball and not wait on it to come to him. Because if he had waited on it, he would have had two defenders uh, breathing down his neck and uh, probably had some trouble. But he plays it smart, goes to get it. Sansone will start things off for the Gamecocks on offense this time around. He's pressured heavily. Sends it to X. Therefore, it was Coleman Smith to the far side for Pat Riley. Now Riley, looks like Harry Carswell on the far side. Sends a pass to the middle. Johnson had it. He scores! Javon Johnson sends it right up the middle on the pass from Carswell. A beautiful lane for the pass. And Johnson with the finish. The Gamecocks on top 3-2 to two with 11-10 to go in the first. So that's the second time they've looked for Javon Johnson on the inside, uh, the heart of the defense. This time, I, I like the feed a lot better than the first uh, option, first, uh, first time they attempted it, because... He didn't stare it down. It was quick. He saw him cutting. He thought, hey, he's got some, some daylight there, and he gave it to him. And Javon handles it uh, under duress, puts it home. Uh, nice play. Griff, this time off of the faceoff, wins it back to the South Carolina defensive end. Collects it to himself, sends it to Teddy Russell. Now Alex Petrish plays it to the far side for Cade Leggio. Frith, uh, Frith came up limping there after he got rid of the ball. Uh, you wonder if that's maybe just a cramp or something else. And if it's something else, that could be a, a major factor in this game. Uh, Pycheck, uh had a great game yesterday and uh, is a quality draw specialist. Uh, the Gamecocks have other guys behind Frith, but, but Frith has been their guy all year long. He's taken far and away the vast majority of the faceoffs. So 
So it's Pat Riley operating on the far side. Steps toward the crease. Didn't have a lane to shoot. Instead, it goes to Coleman Smith. Now Johnny Stanton from up top sends one up high over the top of the net. And from the end line, it'll be Coleman Smith once again. Starting at X. Gamecocks. 30 seconds on the shot clock. 10-18 to go in the half. Up 3-2 to two over Georgia Tech. Trenton Wiley. Sends it down low. Coleman Smith there for it. Wiley got knocked down. A shot in front. Another big hit from the Yellow Jackets. So Wiley tries to win the race to that ball. He does collect it. Georgia Tech defender was down. There's a little bit of space for South Carolina here. And it uh, looked like a Yellow Jacket defender got a stick on it. Now the loose ground ball collected by Georgia Tech. Yeah, Riley's hurting after that uh, hit on the crease. And, you know, uh, credit to Georgia Tech. That's that's what you want out of your defense is to clean up the crease and, and punish guys that, that come in close to uh, your your uh, your goal area. So um, Riley took a, a tough one there. 9.25 to play here in the half. South Carolina up 3-2, to two, but the Yellow Jackets operating offensively here. Pass across. Here's the shot. Was blocked by Teddy Russell. Ground ball is loose, and it'll come now out in favor of South Carolina. They get over midfield. Looks like Carson Healy, rather Harry Carswell. And very nice ground ball under duress. He had two Georgia Tech defenders trailing him closely, but uh, he's able to scoop it uh, first time. Max Rittenmeyer will hold on. South Carolina getting substitutions on. Johnny Stanton. Comes out this time as a midfielder, which we I talked to Trevor Wiley before the game, and he said he was going to get a rotation for Stanton where he gets a lot of shifts on attack, but also will substitute and fill in on midfield when needed. You like the versatility. Here's Rittenmeyer. Steps down low, looking for the crease. Now it's Coleman Smith off the post, this time for the Gamecocks. First Georgia Tech, now South Carolina. Both teams have rung the pipe. In this first half, Smith had a wide open look. Yeah, second time again. I don't think that pass was intended for Coleman Smith, but uh, through the traffic, he, he um, happens to be in the right place at the right time as the ball bounces through. Just could, can't get it to fall home. Um, and, you know, credit to uh, 52 as well uh, for the – netminder for Georgia Tech he uh, he was in a good position uh, I, I think he may have affected that shot uh, as well as it hitting the pipe well and that's a fair point too as well that you know Smith did have time to settle it which gave Zagrobony some time to set his feet in the crease which a lot of times for goaltenders is hard to do in that quick pass it was a skip pass I think and what it became initially just looking for that centering shot top of the slot but Again, Smith had time as well as Zagrobony. So that was a great check from Josh Jansen in the defensive end for South Carolina. Loose ground ball. He couldn't grab it. Uh, could GB and, and a, a timeout. Ball. Timeout for and, Georgia Tech. You know, this makes this makes a lot of sense. Uh, Coach Lovick, you know, he's, he's been up and back, and it's this very tight game. Uh, Georgia Tech has not had a heck of a lot of possession in the last couple of minutes, and they thought they almost lost one right there. They get it back. Uh, they only have 18 seconds on the shot clock, but Coach wants to settle them down and, you know, kind of get everybody on the same page and uh, not flying around like headless chickens. So uh, good, good call by Coach Lovick. 18 seconds, as you said, on the shot clock. Under 10 minutes to play in the second quarter. South Carolina leads 3-2 to two in a game that has been a low-scoring affair to this point. But at the same time, when you, when you really look at it, I mean, again, just saw Coleman Smith ring the pipe. The Yellow Jackets hit the post as well in the first half. So couple of chances that could have found the back of the net not quite as fortunate either side but again coach Ken Lovick taking the time out inducted into the SELC Hall of Fame back in the class of 2020 I believe but just got recognized for it here today or yesterday rather with the festivities going on of championship weekend for the SELC yeah everybody remembers 2020 is the year that uh 
we started off strong, had about half a season, and then the world shut down. Um, so that Hall of Fame class was never able to uh, be recognized in the way that we, we try to do for all Hall of Fame inductees, and they were yesterday. Quarles has room, takes the shot, and scores. A tie game right out of the timeout. Georgia Tech, and that was some shiftiness out of the attackman, Pierce Quarles. Georgia uh, Tech. You could you could feel uh, Pierce, you know, he's their leading scorer. Uh, you could feel the energy when he had the ball in his stick. He, he wanted to make an impact on this game. I believe that's his first tally in the game. Uh, you could sense that he was uh, trying, to, trying to get on the score sheet, uh, trying to uh, help his team in this game. They, they pull even. Quarles is 35th of the year. Frith won another faceoff. He got checked while the ball was loose there. Charlie King came in with a big check. Carson Healy has it. For South Carolina, got to move it, lost it again, and Georgia Tech will get possession. 6.43 to play in the second quarter. It's a tie game, and the Jackets on the attack once again. Quarles controls it on the near side. Plays it up top. There for it was Nick Witten. And the Yellow Jackets looking to try to stay persistent on the attack here. Up top, sent to the far side, right in the alley. Pass that had a stick on it. That one thrown up high. Does connect with a man. Ashen Reich threw a check on the way. He knocked down Quarles. But to the far side, now up top once again for Georgia Tech. It's Grosso to Quarles. Steps to the middle. Gets past King, looking for a shot. King with a heavy check on him. Takes it this time. Shoots with the far side of the net. Goes cross body with that one. And with 31 seconds, Georgia Tech will reset from the inline. 5.55 to go in the second quarter. Nick Witten starts it off this time for Georgia Tech. He steps to the middle, trying to get past Carson Healy. He took a spill. Petrish makes the save. A point-blank opportunity from the top of the slot for Witten. And Petrish gets down low, blocks it up with the stick. Keeps this game at 3-3. Three to three. Here's Ashton Reich on the transition for the Gamecocks. He'll settle it and go off for the substitution. South Carolina offense back in business. Johnny Stanton plays it to Jake McQuaid to the far side. Pat Riley fakes the pass initially. Now this time he goes to Sansone, who sends it to Rittenmeyer. Telegraphs the pass to Stanton. He'll come to the center looking for a shot. He's found a couple now at the top of the slot for South Carolina. Rittenmeyer lost possession, regathers the ground ball, has room to shoot and does, goes up high, misses the net, no and backup. Georgia Tech wins the race for possession. No backup. There's nobody behind the cage, and so as soon as the ball goes out of bounds, the goalie is closest to the ball. Uh, good call by the official. Sent through the center, a bouncing pass, not well played by Georgia Tech. South Carolina scoops it up on the turnover. Now they can't get a pass to go. And it'll still be South Carolina ball, that pass that was intercepted there, or rather deflected by a Georgia Tech defender, goes out of play. So South Carolina gets another chance here with a reset shot clock. Petrish plays the pass to Sigilski. He floats it over the top to Teddy Russell. Russell passes it to Wiley. Now calm it down for the offense. McQuaid from X to Pat Riley on the far side. Now up top, looks like Drew Lombell and Max Rittenmeyer once again for South Carolina. Johnny Stanton, again, cutting to the middle. Has room this time. Passes it to Pat Riley. He steps to the alley on the far side. Still looking for a chance here. Tries to dip a pass through the middle, and it deflected off a stick almost into the net. And it looks like a push call coming, and they'll get it. South Carolina with possession and a reset shot clock here. Four minutes to play in the half. Tie game at three. Nick Harvey and J.D. Harkey with you. On the call here is Johnny Stanton. Throws a pass to the near side. Rittmeyer has room. Sends it across. Goaltender got the stick in the way initially. Still loose out in front. And Zagrobini trying to swallow it up. It's loose there. The ball came out. The quick shot from South Carolina. It looks like a hold. 
And it'll be South Carolina possession once again. Uh, it looks like that the referee called uh, the Georgia Tech goalkeeper withholding the ball from play, I meaning covering it up and not trying to make a play on it. Uh, that's a tough call as a keeper because you're taught to, you know, cover the ball up, keep a, keep a foot in the crease and try to pick it up, but you can't just sit on it. Yeah, you, ha you have to make a play on it. Kevin Sansone pulls one from range. Zagrobody made the save. Looked like he got it with a piece of the cleat there. Yeah, it was a very nice kick save. Uh, good luck for Sansone. Great, great kick save. Alex Lee brings it forward. The pass there for Max Lucas, and Lucas will settle things on the near side. 3-10 to go in the half. 3-3. Three to three. The Yellow Jackets with possession. Pierce Quarles and the pass to Sam Eck. High pass across. He connects with his man. It's Ron. Steps down the alley on the far side, sends it to X. Now pass up top for Quarles once again. 40 seconds left on the shot clock. 2.43 to go in the half. Quarles has room, hesitates, sends it to X. Couldn't be handled by the Georgia Tech attackman. That was Max Lucas who fumbled possession there, and South Carolina gets a chance in the transition once again. Uh, you know, a shout out to to both these teams. The rope unit is uh, your defensive midfield, the short sticks as well as the long stick midfielder. Uh, both of these teams uh, sporting very high quality rope units, and these guys are these guys are battling. Pat Riley looked like he was going to shoot. Fakes handles it for a minute, sends it to Stanton, the skip pass there, and a timeout called for South Carolina. Three to three with two minutes to play in the quarter. That's a you know it's a good timeout call. You can't you can't take your timeouts with you. Um, you probably uh, you're not going to miss it in the next two minutes. Uh, got possession and 45 seconds on the shot clock. And you draw dial up something nice. Uh, try to get a try to get a one goal advantage going into halftime. It's a nice call, Coach Candela. South Carolina going to get a chance to regroup. 45 seconds on the shot clock for the Gamecocks coming out of this timeout. A 3-3 ball game. And a, a, like you said before, play so far in this game, I, I think a lot of it has been decided by the rope units for both teams. It's been exceptional keeping these offenses, these attack men at bay through almost two quarters of play almost halfway through this contest uh, there's there's a number of guys on both sides of the ball in both both jerseys black and white who are uh, contributing uh tate snydow number 15 for the gamecocks uh is a long stick midfielder by trade that's that's the position that he's played uh through high school and coming into college and uh, today, yesterday we saw it a little bit, and I pointed it out, and today we've seen him only, almost exclusively as a short stick defensive midfielder and playing very well. Um, you know, good footwork, uh, good teamwork, playing off ball. Um, it just, uh, you love to see a guy uh, being unselfish with, with his role and, and embracing whatever the team and staff is asking of him. So the Gamecocks with possession. Stanton sent a pass to McQuaid and swing it. He'll swing it to the far side. Connor Balcom setting up with the offense this time. We, we talked about it with Trevor as well. Coach Wiley. Here's that play again. Riley shoots it down low. Goaltender makes the stop on the bouncing shot. We saw it yesterday trying to clear up that space in the middle for a Pat Riley go. That time he pulled it. He got a, a good look. It. Got a good look. Uh, gold, goaltender makes a great save. But again, Connor Balcom, as I was speaking before, Trevor Wiley said they want to rotate Balcom both offensively and defense for the midfield. Try to give him looks on either side with the loss of DeLuca for the Gamecocks injured during the Clemson game with a broken collarbone. So as the Yellow Jackets get set for offense, the chrome gold helmets for Georgia Tech flashing off in the sunlight. Looking like he was going to try to dip down low was Ron. Instead, sent a pass for Quarles that he couldn't handle initially. Scoops up the ground ball. Plays it to the far side. Barrel there for it. 
He'll take it to X. Tries to step toward the crease. So a little hop step there. Sends it back behind the net to the far side. Chance for a shot here. Stick was tied up. There's the rip. Misses on the near side. 14 seconds left on the shot clock. And they do get the reset as Quarles will look to hesitate and make a move. Sent to the far side. They shouldn't have gotten the reset on the shot clock. I, I was wondering why that reset came. It was down to 14 seconds initially, and then they had a reset as we resumed play. Looks like maybe the officials are talking about it. I did not see a signal from the officials calling for the reset. And again, I, I believe the shot clock was down to 14, so they're going to run it down. We'll see that now. Closing stages of this first half. Try to get things sorted here. So you got a official coming to the box to and again they tell us tell us what we're gonna do. Running more of the shot clock down now. Yeah, running it, running it down to seven seconds is what we're hearing over the radio. Um, is that that sounds about right? It was 14 when it went out of bounds. So they try to get the shot clock to run down a long, longer stoppage than initially planned for. They do get it set to seven seconds. Looks like we're ready to resume play here. 20 seconds to go in the half. Tie game three to three. Seven seconds on the shot clock for Georgia Tech. Sigilski is matched up with his man here on the near side. He'll try to step toward, takes the shot, misses on the far side. Ball will go out of play. Georgia Tech backs it up, but they only have two seconds left on the shot clock, so they've sent uh, their offensive midfielders off the field. Played a ball up high. So now South Carolina. Seven seconds left in the half. And looks like just a long shot there from Cade Leggio will send us to halftime. Three uh, to three. Tied up. Tied up. Good. An exciting first half. Uh, not a heck of a lot of scoring, but th that belies the action back and forth. Uh, a couple of great looks, some big saves by both netminders, uh, some shots ringing off the pipe. It was a good half. Yeah, definitely a competitive first half from both teams, but we remain deadlocked at three. As we head to halftime, we'll take a break with them. Once again, Nick Harvey, J.D. Harkey with you. For the broadcast here today, we'll be back for second half action after this short break. For over 20 years, Quick Cut has been the leading provider of elevated video in Florida. With over 50 large tripods available, Quick Cut can cover any sporting event. We are a one-stop shop for all your video services, for tournaments and any event. Visit us at quickcut.com or call 407-768-2011 for a free quote. Let Quick Cut take your sporting event to the next level. We are excited to introduce the Quick Cut platform, the ultimate solution for storing and analyzing your game film. With immediate access to review video, coaches and athletes can stay ahead of the game and take their performance to new levels. Our statisticians can provide a complete breakdown of your game, giving you invaluable insights into your team's performance. No matter what sport, event, or tournament you're planning, QuickCut has you covered. Visit us at quickcut.com or call 407-768-2011 to get started today. 
Let Quick Cut take your sporting event to the next level. Quick Cut has been providing video services across Florida for over two decades. We have extensively covered college, high school, and youth sports. Our services include video of any sport, streaming, and broadcasting. We can even provide play-by-play -play and color commentary. No matter what sport, event, or tournament you're planning, Quick Cut has you covered. Visit us at quickcut.com or call 407-768-2011 to get started today. Let Quick Cut take your sporting event to the next level.
wearing all black with white helmets, Georgia Tech, the gold chrome helmets and white jerseys and shorts as we get set for the second half. It'll be South Carolina attacking left to right, Georgia Tech from right to left, opening face off moments away. One by Will Fritt. He'll carry it right up the middle, has room, steps to the side, takes the shot, and the bouncer just over the top of the net. But the Gamecocks get possession to start the second half. Johnny Stanton operating on the far side for the Gamecock offense. Quick pass up top. As Donnie Ryan comes on the field with Kevin Sansone, Pat Riley on the near side now. Sends that ball to X for Coleman Smith. He fakes back the other way to Riley. Now Ryan. Cross for Sansone. Sansone on the far side. Steps to the middle. Has Ryan there. Looking for a pass. He'll head to the far side as well. They'll switch places. Sent to X. Blocked up by the body of Smith. He has to collect it quick. Now on the near side once again. Rather the far side. It'll be Johnny Stanton, 28 seconds left on the shot clock, to Smith at X. Coleman Smith, couple hop steps there, sends it to Sansone. He takes a quick shot Ooh. and scores! You Kevin love that. Sansone! Sansone with the quick trigger, right? You know, uh, he's got a great shot, but he took a little bit off at that time he wasn't worried about shooting as hard as he possibly could he was trying to get it out of his stick as quickly as he could because the goalie is moving from right to left across the cage uh where he's tracking the ball on the right hand side pass comes into the middle kevin's on the back side gets a quick one off and puts it right in the corner what a what a finish face off was tied up that time and won by the yellow jackets pie check gets the win for Georgia Tech, and they'll get possession. Nick Witten sends a pass. Had a man there only for a moment. The defender will head off, or rather the long stick committee. The offense will get rolling. Max Lucas for the Yellow Jackets. Sends it to X. There for it was Krasicki. Matt Krasicki, we were talking about yesterday, is uh, our, our resident rocket scientist. Now Witten up top. The far side, a nice dodge. The shot misses on the near side. That was a shifty move by Ron. That was beautiful stuff from the Georgia Tech attack there. 40 seconds on the shot clock. Just about two minutes gone by. A nice check came from Tate Snydell. And it'll be carried out by Charlie King. A nice job once again by the midfield for South Carolina. Here's Johnny Stanton in transition. Feeds Riley in the crease. Couldn't connect on the pass. Riley was knocked down. Georgia Tech gets possession back. The Yellow Jackets moving it forward. It's Wagnon for Georgia Tech. There was a check at the end of that play. Big time hit from South Carolina. But Georgia Tech operates offensively once more. Max Lucas behind the net brings it to the near side. Legio defending on him. Ron once again. This time tethers a pass. And a little bit of pitch and catch from the Georgia Tech attack up top. Ron looking for a lane, a heavy check from South Carolina, a short side shot once again, misses the net. Georgia Tech with another opportunity coming, Josh Jansen with the heavy pressure there for the midfield from the Gamecocks. Ron on the pass from Quarles, looking to make another move, gets past Jansen, throws the pass there, a low shot, didn't have a lot on it, some great defense from South Carolina, Petrish. Swallows it up into the big pocket and plays it to Tim Sigilski. Defender makes a nice dodge there. He'll play the pass up to Teddy Russell. And the outlet transition works for South Carolina this time. Over midfield, it's the Gamecocks on offense once again. Yeah, that was a uh, feed inside to Matt Krasicki. And uh, he was open there for a second, but the Gamecocks collapsed on him really quickly. Uh, wasn't able to get he, he got a shot off, but I think he wanted to get a little bit more on it He wasn't able to put his weight behind that shot Kevin Sansone started things out pass was now in the hands of Pat Riley and it made its way all the way back to Sansone the cycle Quickly there for the for the Gamecocks Coleman Smith now Pat Riley Riley makes a dodge faces two men the pick not quite as effective for the Gamecocks there Riley has to handle it a little bit longer now he'll back things up and try to make a move here 
Sends a pass across. The shot looked like it might have hit the post. Could have gone off the goaltender. But with the way that it deflected up like it did, I believe that probably hit Pipe. That was crossbar. Yeah. A nice pull. A uh, good decision by Pat Riley on the feed. Here's Donnie Ryan once again for the Gamecocks. Pass to Trenton Wiley. Wiley to Riley. Could be a tongue twister there. Pat Riley. Operating on the near side, right in the alley. Skip pass to Stanton. He fires, misses for the wide side of the net. Might have, uh, not a bad take at all after the skip pass. Might have had one more to Sansone right in the middle. Now Coleman Smith takes the ball to X. 50 seconds on the shot clock for the Gamecocks. 10-32 to go in the third quarter. South Carolina up by one. Donnie Ryan steps into the alley, uses that physical presence. Ball was checked out. Georgia Tech trying to get it. Riley gets in the way of Georgia Tech, uh, the, the midfielder there. They call the over and back. Sansone touched it first. And Georgia Tech will get possession here. Here's Quarles to start things off for the Yellow Jackets. Quarles with a goal in the end stages of the second quarter, right before the half. This time he shakes free from a couple defenders for South Carolina. And the return feed. That came from Max Lucas. Matching up there was Barrow. Brooks Barrow had a big game last night. He's been a little bit quiet so far. Had room there. The shot bounced up in near the crease, but missed wide. And right as you were talking about him, Coach, he made a good move there, had a great opportunity for the Yellow Jackets. I swear they're listening to us. Now Pierce quarrels once again for Georgia Tech. Pivots back the other way. He had a nice move. Sends one to the middle. Kosicki had it for a moment. Sent it to Barrow. His shot down low. Petrish makes the save. A bouncing ball right towards the crease. Alex Petrish with a big time stop for the Gamecocks. They'll try to transition back to offense here. South Carolina net miner with possession. He'll float one for Cade Leggio. Hits him in stride. A nice pass from the South Carolina goaltender. Better handle. And a late whistle came in there. They say, they're saying offsides, you know, uh, maybe a delayed call. I thought, I thought it was uh, close to being offsides well before the call was made. But when he makes the call, they clearly had a man back. Uh, maybe it's just a little bit slow to blow the whistle. Uh, tough, tough if you're on the Carolina bench, but... Uh, Quarles fired a shot there that went off the crossbar. It was Matthias who played that pass to him. Plenty of room to shoot, and I believe that might be the second time for Quarles that he's hit the pipe here for the Yellow Jackets. Again, we saw in the first half a couple times a lot of shots ringing off of the posts here in Jacksonville. That was a nice take by Quarles. Here's Quarles again, stepping on the far side, trying to get to the alley. Here's the pass in front. Shot, they score. Georgia Tech responds. Stagnant start fairly for both teams there. I believe it was Devin Froman. Rather, correction there, Joseph Rose. It was Rose, with a, Rose with a nice timed cut. Um, you know, he, he presents himself in a good spot on the field as his teammates looking to make the feed. Quarles with the feed? I believe it was Quarles who would get the assist there, yes. And Petrish, the goaltender for South Carolina, he got down, but it looked like it bounced right under his legs just a second too late for the Gamecock netminder. We get set for play once again. Faceoff was one forward by Frith, but he couldn't get the ground ball. Now it's loose. And on the ground, Charlie King trying to get to it. Still a battle for the ball. Picked up from South Carolina. Whistle blows. And there is a discussion amongst the officials here. I, they're gonna give and it look, they're pulling out the cards to see who's awarded the the AP alternate possession. But I I don't know what exactly the stoppage was. I maybe someone was asking for uh, a um, 
illegal procedure on stepping out of the box before there was possession, but it, it appeared that there had been possession already. So we'll see how it gets sorted out. And it will be South Carolina possession. The sideline gets lively for that one for the Gamecocks. The, the downside there, if the AP was uh, awarded, is that now if there's another – it doesn't happen all that often. AP is not super uh, – it, it's more frequent in basketball than it is in lacrosse. Uh, but if there's another play later on in the game that's, uh, oh, you don't want to give that away. Bad turnover there from Legio. Georgia Tech in transition. The quick shot misses on the near side. South Carolina wins the race for possession because of the transition. Quarles wasn't in position there to get to the race for possession. Well, and Petrish Quar Quar awarded it for South Carolina. Quarles is running, uh, running hard to back it up, but he's all the way on the outside of the box. And again, the rule is closest to the shot as it goes out of bounds, where and when it goes out, not just, hey, I'm closest to the end line. So South Carolina has possession once again. Harry Carr as well. Plays a pass to Max Rittenmeyer. He'll send it to Pat Riley. Riley down low at X for Coleman Smith. Played to Johnny Stanton back up top. The rotation for Rittenmeyer. Rittenmeyer steps down the alley. Feeds a pass across. Couldn't be handled. It was a low pass. Now Johnny Stanton has it, sends a pass to the far side, looking for a shot, not getting it initially was Carswell. Now he'll take the rip off the post. Pipe again. This game has been a game of inches, really, here. Just shots barely missing the mark. Centimeters. And Pat Riley wins the race for possession there for the Gamecocks, sells out for it. So South Carolina gets it back and a reset shot clock because of where that ball landed going off the pipe and out of play. Yeah, you, you get a reset any time that the shot contacts the, the frame of the goal or the goaltender. Um, so it's, it's huge for the offensive team. Stanton looking for the rip, didn't like what he had. Pat Riley now fires it down low. An easy save made for a global knee. Not the greatest look for the South Carolina offense that we've seen in this contest this afternoon. Felt maybe a little bit of sense of urgency from Pat Riley there trying to throw that shot on net. Yeah, you know, I mean, he had a lot a lot more clock to work with and probably could get a better shot than that. Uh, he probably thought that he had less time than he actually did. If he had st settled down, set his feet, and had his momentum going towards the goal, it would have been a stronger shot. But I think, you know, he probably uh, thought the defense was breathing down his neck and in actuality he had a little bit more space than he realized. Georgia Tech once again on offense. A tie game 4-4. Four to four. Shaking off a couple defenders there was Wagnon. Still having to deal with some heavy pressure from the South Carolina defense. A missed pass. It goes out of play. South Carolina will get it back. And looks hey. like Ron didn't know that possession was going to change. Well, the, there's a couple of guys on Georgia Tech arguing the play. Maybe they saw something the official didn't uh, about you know, a uh, ball being tipped by a defender's stick. Uh, either way, the official makes the call that he makes, and uh, I've always told my own players, you can't put palms up, you can't argue, argue with the officials. The, the only thing that can come with that is a, a penalty, really. Uh, you're never going to change the officials' mind when they make a call, but and you got to let your coaching staff do their job. And one of the coaching staff's job on game day is to lobby the officials, and even so, th they're not going to get them to change a mind in any specific call, but they might buy a call later in the game. Johnny Stanton steps to the middle, up top, looking for a chance to rip it from the slot. Didn't have room, some nice defensive efforts from the Yellow Jackets as here's Stanton again. He was heavily pressured that time. Now he has room, takes a shot and scores! Johnny Stanton finds the back of the net once again, the Gamecocks back on top with 4.41 to play in the third quarter. That was uh, you know, pretty stout defense by the short stick defensive midfielder uh, for Georgia Tech, but uh, Stanton just absorbs the pressure uh, rolls rolls away and then rolls back again when the man overcommits and overplays him down the alley. Uh, comes back for his strength in the middle of the field, puts it home. That was Carrington Kelsey. 
giving the pressure there for the Yellow Jackets. We get back to the faceoff here. A long tie-up. Now it finally shakes loose. And it was scooped up but not handled by the Gamecocks. So Georgia Tech will get a chance here to respond. Coleman Smith coming to help pressure. And a missed pass. Ron takes control for Georgia Tech and he's able to settle it down. The Yellow Jackets making their substitutions with just 4.06 to go in the third quarter. A low scoring affair, some great defensive effort from both sides and also some missed passes and chances for both sides. As the Yellow Jackets looking for another scoring opportunity here, it's Barrow. A missed pass. That's going to head to the end line. South Carolina will get possession back. And a handful of Georgia Tech fans here on site today. Some South Carolina fans in attendance as well. The Gamecocks with possession with 345 to go in the third quarter. Up 5-4 to four over Georgia Tech. Teddy Russell accepts that pass from Cade Leggio. South Carolina operating offensively once more. Pat Riley gets that pass to Trenton Wiley to set up the Gamecock offense. The attack here for the Gamecocks. Still some substitutions being made. Sansone passes it to Stanton. Down low at X for Smith. Now Pat Riley on the near side. Riley looking to go to the center. Didn't like what he had. Johnny Stanton has room. Sends a pass in front. And it hits the goaltender stick rather than Coleman Smith, who I believe that was intended for down low. Gamecocks turn it over. And Georgia Tech will get a chance to transition once again. Yeah, it was uh, not a half bad look, but uh, not great execution. Uh, the pass goes uh, a lot closer to the goaltender than its intended target. Well, and I'll tell you, it's good to see here for Georgia Tech. Hudson Higgins is back on the field for the Yellow Jackets. We saw him take that shot block in the first half. Might have Wrong his ears as there's a shot just missed on the wide side was Ron looking for another goal in this one. Javon Johnson tried to lay out for possession, but it'll be the Yellow Jackets to get possession of the ball offensively here. Two and a half to play in the third. 46 seconds on the Georgia Tech shot clock. Credit to Javon, not only for the hustle trying to run out the play, but then also sprinting all the way back up to the midfield line to uh, get a man in for him to play some defense. I mean, uh, that's uh, about 100 yards worth of running in uh, 10 seconds or less and uh, with a dive in the middle of it. Uh, lots of hustle out here from both squads. Both teams trying to prove that they want it more. Georgia Tech with possession. Shows if Rose scored here in this third quarter for the Georgia Tech attack. Here's the Yellow Jackets. There's a nice fake. A shot in front. Alex Petrus turns it aside. The Gamecock netminder comes up big. Uh, Georgia Tech comes up with the ground ball, though, and now they've got a fresh shot clock. With a minute 30 to play in the third quarter. To your point there, trying to pivot away and find some room is Wagnon. He does get past one man. A nice stick check. Ball comes free. There to scoop it up was Charlie King, but he didn't handle it well enough. Slipped out from behind his stick. And it'll be Georgia Tech still with possession and a full shot clock to work with. 107 to go in the third. 68 seconds on the shot clock. Now this is a matchup you like if you're Georgia Tech. You've got your leading goal scorer on a short stick defensive midfielder. That shot just whistled wide. Pierce Quarles sent it to Wagnon, or rather Max Lucas. And he put the shot wide of the crease. Petrish was able to settle just in time and forced him to take a, an awkward angle shot. Jansen couldn't settle the bouncing pass. Pat Riley does. 37 seconds, and the Gamecocks have it. Connor Balcom. Yeah, you know, Riley making a big play right there with a tough ground ball in a goofy situation and now chance to score one more before the end of the quarter. Coleman Smith plays the pass to Johnny Stanton. Pat Riley has room. Pivots the other direction. Doesn't like it. Pivots back out. Tried to go in front. They do and they score. South Carolina, Coleman Smith finds the back of the net 
With 12 seconds to go in the third quarter, the Gamecocks extend their lead to two. Yeah, Pat, you know, the whole stadium is thinking Pat Riley's going to unleash one. Uh, everybody knows the clock's winding down. He rolls to his offhand, his right. Then he rolls back again to his strength. And everybody's thinking a shot's coming, a shot's coming. The defense is thinking that too. And you get uh, a nice cut. Uh, uh, right across the face of the crease by Coleman, and Pat finds him. That's a good piece of offense. Well, a face-off violation for the Yellow Jackets. The Gamecocks going to get one more chance with 11 seconds to go in the third. That South Carolina sideline is energy all the way through here in these last couple possessions. One of what I would deem one of the more vocal sidelines in the MCLA, especially the SELC. They, they definitely shift some outcomes. Drew Lombell, the pass across, hesitates, couldn't pull it. Now over to Riley. He couldn't settle the ball. That's on the ground. And at the end of three, the Gamecocks lead by two, headed to the fourth here in Jacksonville. At the Bulls School, George H. Hodges Field. And Coach Harkey, 15 minutes left here in regulation time for the Gamecocks and the Yellow Jackets. How do you think this one pans out? I mean, it's, it's far from over. Uh, it's far from over. Both teams have got to continue to uh, play hard. And, you know, of course, that's going to be the message if you're in the Georgia Tech uh, huddle. You know, you're saying this game isn't over. Uh, it's been a low-scoring affair. We've been right there. We've had great opportunities. Uh, keep at it, and a couple more will fall. Um, if you're the Gamecocks, you're, you're saying, hey, you know, there's, there's no room to relax here. You can't uh, take a breath because you're up two, two goals. Um, you know, you got to continue to play. And this is the fourth quarter. This is the, the one that ultimately decides the game and many teams in all kinds of sports focus on the fourth quarter as uh, being the one you want to win. Um, you know, both teams are, are talking strategy and, and talking energy and attitude. Um, you know, hustle and, and clean play with ground balls and stick work is, is going to decide this, I think. Well, the Georgia Tech fans, parents, friends and family in attendance trying to get some jackets chance going here to start the fourth quarter. Trying to shift some momentum in their favor as we get set for the final quarter of action. There will be 15 minutes in regulation. Six to four the score. South Carolina currently in the lead. The rematch from the from the previous season's SELC championship for these two teams. Just about set for the faceoff here. And again, you want to see, I think, uh, another point here. You want to see that South Carolina sideline stay energized and stay into this game here at the start of the fourth because they, they have shifted games in their favor before just getting their guys on the field juiced. Oh, both, both sides. I mean, Georgia Tech is that way as well. Um... And, uh, you know, I, I think both teams are pretty well locked in. Uh, Sidelines aren't buzzing too much right now, but uh, one, one big play for either side is going to get the boys jumping. Opening faceoff of the fourth quarter. One by Will Frith, plays it back, and a nice, nicely fielded ground ball by Carson Healy. He'll head to the far sideline, trying to get a pass. He does for Jack Parkin. Now the Gamecocks will make their substitutions for offense. It'll be Trenton Wiley to hold possession starting off. He'll play it to Johnny Stanton on the near side. Now Coleman Smith to Pat Riley on the far end. Johnny Ryan up top for the Gamecocks. He holds it. Dances to his right. Pass to X for Coleman Smith. Out to Johnny Stanton on the near side. Back up top for Rittmeyer. Rittmeyer. Steps to the right, has a pass in front, was blocked by the defense, and the Yellow Jackets flag will out. escape. There's a flag down. Looked like it might be a slash coming to the Gamecocks. Not an ideal, uh, and, and there's more another. flags down. That's not ideal. Uh, yeah. And Ooh, in and transition, the Yellow Jackets score. It's Pierce Quarles 
And we'll see how these penalties get handed out for South Carolina. Yeah, that's, you know, that's that's a huge swing right there. Uh, that's big for Georgia Tech. You uh, half the deficit, and you're gonna about to go into a man-up face-off, and it might be a two-man-up face-off. Um, that's tough if, if you're uh, Carolina. And now Carolina, uh, obviously, y you can't take away credit from Carolina for sticking to their guns and playing tough in that game against Georgia last night. But to some extent, Georgia let them back in the game with, uh, you know, uh, some some not very smart penalties. And so Carolina, with a little bit of a lead, you can't allow your opponent to climb back in it with, um, you know, losing your head. Here come the penalty calls. First call is a slash. And so, I haven't seen anybody head to the box yet for South Carolina. Yeah, this is going to be, yes, yeah, so we got Will Frith by himself against three Georgia Tech midfielders. And so, yeah, like, like you said here, the Yellow Jackets will be man up times two here coming out of that time uh, out of that stoppage and the jackets trailed by one the score six to five with 1340 to go in the fourth starting things out for the yellow jackets on the far side was Wagnon sent to X now Pierce Quarles on the near side up top for Ron passes it across Back down low, Quarles in front, shots off the pipe Breaks once the again. Pipe. Yeah, that, that was a good look, a good piece of passing by the Georgia Tech extra man offense. Uh, and Sam Eck gets a great look. He probably wanted to have that back, uh, you know, a couple centimeters uh, to the right, and, and that's in the goal. It looks like Cade Leggio going to try to float a long one up for Pat Riley. Couldn't connect with him. Riley took a spill. Georgia Tech will bring it right back in. Looked like one penalty might have released. That was a great check by Cade Leggio. Knocked his man down to slow up the Yellow Jackets. Now Georgia Tech feeling the pressure. Ball comes loose again. Scrappy play for both teams. And it looks like South Carolina is back to full. Here's Higgins looking for a chance. Ron. Yeah, we're, we're all even now. And Georgia Tech with possession. 12 20 to go in the fourth. 6 to 5, South Carolina. The SELC finals. Nick Harvey and JD Harkey with you on the call. Shaping up to be another thriller. From what I was told, the D2 championship as well, a thriller between Kennesaw State and Florida Gulf Coast. A great game. A goaltending clinic, from what I heard. Oh, and yeah. Both goalies standing on their head. And this one, we've seen both goaltenders make some impressive saves for either side as well. It's really not surprising in order to get yourselves here to Championship Sunday. Oh, Ron took finish. the shot, cross body, and hits it in the far side of the net. And Georgia Tech ties this one with 11.43 to go in the fourth quarter. We're seeing some communication from the Gamecock defense there following that goal. Some adamant communication from some of the defensive leaders there. Yeah, tied up ball game. I mean, you know, as as we said, this this wasn't uh, this isn't surprising. This is a heavyweight fight. As we mentioned before, two juggernauts over the past few years for the SELC squaring off once again. And Ron really put that shot to a great location. Johnny Stanton looking for the high shot off of the faceoff win from Frith. Misses up high. South Carolina did have the trailer there. And we'll start with possession here. 70 seconds on the shot clock. 11.37 to go in the fourth quarter. Max Rittenmeyer to Johnny Stanton. They play pitch and catch. Well, on the return feed, this time they'll swing it back the other direction for Kevin Sansone. Now Rittenmeyer back to Stanton on the near side. 
Stanton stepping towards the middle. The pick unsuccessful. Sends a pass now to Pat Riley. Riley, the Gamecock leading goal scorer, has room. Shoots for the near side and just pushed it a it little bit like, outside. It looked like he tried to change up his shooting stroke a little bit there uh, to be a bit deceptive and maybe throw the goalie off. Um, couldn't put it on frame, though. Gamecocks once again. It's Trenton Wiley. Sporting brand new cleats today. He actually broke one of his cleats in yesterday's contest against the Bulldogs. Had to go get some new shoe wear today. And a missed pass there from Pat Riley over the top. Georgia Tech will get back possession with 10.47 to go in the fourth, a tie game. You don't want to have empty possessions in this, tie, this part of the game. Higgins plays it to Witten. Now Witten, Witten pit, pivots the other direction towards the far side of the field. They'll have a pass there. It's Barrow. Barrow looking to set up the offense for the Jackets. He gets matched up with Jack Parkin. Now it's to the far side for Wagnon. Pivots. And tried to roll out to his right there. Got there, but a nice persistent check from the Gamecocks. Now once again, Wagnon looking to shoot. Turns it around. Misses. Looking for the far side of the net. 30 seconds left on the shot clock. 9.56 to go in the fourth. Georgia Tech still with possession here. It's Barrow this time. It's past his man, has room, he scores! Wow. Right between the legs. Petrus couldn't get his stick on it, and Georgia Tech takes the lead with 9.47 to go in the fourth. Petrus gets a piece, uh, but it just trickles by him. The momentum takes it, uh, takes it past him. It's uh, a good take there by Brooks Barrow. I think that might be his first tally of the game. Uh, Charlie King on his uh, trailing him there. Um, you know, Charlie's played well this weekend. Uh, you'd like to see him kind of go to his uh, signature, waiting for the man to pull the shot back and then chopping down hard before before he lets go. Face off one here by the Yellow Jackets. A big time hit. Man escapes it. They score. Just like we saw in the beginning of the game. A goal for Pycheck and the Yellow Jackets extend their lead to two with 9.40 to play in the fourth. That was a, a very nice, impressive play by Pycheck to handle the pressure, handle the pressure on the uh, initial drive and then still get one off with what it looked like to be his offhand, his left hand. Um, a little bit of mo going for Georgia Tech. Face off, one by Frith. Can't scoop up the ground ball. He'll play it back for Charlie King. Now King will handle it and wait for the substitution. South Carolina needs a big offensive possession here to respond. Trenton Wiley has it for Johnny Stanton. Back to Wiley coming on. Javon Johnson, and it looks like possibly Donnie Ryan headed towards the middle there. Rather, Max Rittenmeyer will occupy the middle for the Gamecocks. Johnny Stanton back up top for Wiley. Now to Johnson. Johnson heads to the far alley. Goes to X for Coleman Smith. Smith looking. Still surveying for a pass. Now he'll give it off to Johnny Stanton. Stanton will match up at X. An ideal matchup here for Stanton. He has a short stick midi on him. He gets doubled, knocked to the ground, gets back up, still has possession. Up top. Javon Johnson, shifty is he. Here's the shot, save made off the stick, it bounces in. Wow. Trenton Wiley put it in the back of the net. The goaltender, Zagrowalny, made the initial save there, and it bounced out of his stick and into the goal. Yeah, the, the momentum of the shot uh, carried it through. You know, hey, I got to love, I didn't catch what number, which number it was, but the Georgia Tech defender selling out to try to prevent the goal from occurring, you know, uh, throwing his stick in there, trying to bat the ball out, uh, causing the goal to topple over. You know, that's great uh, effort and energy, even if it didn't work out. 
An early start for Will Frith. The violation gives the Jackets possession with 8.28 to go. An 8-7 game. The Gamecocks trail by one. Georgia Tech with the recent lead change. Pichek, the man who got the eighth goal and extended the lead to two, but South Carolina cuts back into it. Trenton Wiley puts one in the back of the net with a lot of force here in this SELC final. Here's another shot they score. Barrow again. Little Down bit of low. A little bit of a heat check for him, and seems like after the check, he's... He's hot. He's still hot. It's a good location to his shot. Uh, Alex Petrish is a big, tall, right-handed goalie. He shoots low and away, uh, away from the right-handed stickhead of uh, Alex, and uh, it's also away from where he was on the field. Uh, it's a good shooting location. So Georgia Tech extends their lead to two once again. With 8-11 to play in the fourth. Will Frith wins the draw. Plays it behind him to Charlie King. He'll have to waste some time to keep possession as the Gamecocks get offense on. King has room. He's going to take the shot and the bouncer misses up high. A nice effort from the long stick Mitty. He like that choice to shoot there. He's got to put it a little bit more towards the net. But it's a good way to react to pressure. Uh, if you're being pressured, attack the goal. Trenton Wiley. Gets it to Kevin Sansone, now Javon Johnson. To the far side for Pat Riley. 7.45 to go in the fourth. Gamecocks trail by two, operating in the offensive end. Kevin Sansone, Javon Johnson. Johnson has possession, carries it down the alley. He gets pushed, takes a spill. We'll send it to X. Jake McQuaid there for it. McQuaid, big body. Now Johnny Stanton. Feeds in for Riley. Couldn't find a shot. He gets doubled. Sends a roller to McQuaid. He couldn't handle it. It goes behind him. Georgia Tech with a chance to capitalize and uh, once again get in the way of a South Carolina offensive possession. Yeah, that was um, not ideal offense. Bobbling the ball around a little bit. Seven minutes to go in the fourth. Here's Quarles. Petrish makes the stop there. Will try to win the race for possession and couldn't do so. He'll have to run back to the crease. Now he'll get a reset on the shot clock. Six fifty to go in the fourth. The full shot clock to operate for Georgia Tech. Shot clock not running here. Now it starts. They're gonna have to let that run down. The late whistle comes in. Running the shot clock down to 72. And now we'll get back underway. Nick Witten passed it to the far side. Now down low at X. Up top for Braun. Now Witten to the far side for Wagnon. He's going to try to find a shot here. Checked heavily. Takes it. Petrish makes the save. Got it with the elbow. And the Gamecocks get possession back. 6-10 to play in the fourth. Down by two. South Carolina once again. Got to make do here quickly. And a missed pass. But the ground ball scooped Pat up Riley. by Pat Riley. Feeds it in front. Smith hesitates. And a nice check from the defense to slow up that South Carolina transition there. Timeout. I think a smart call by coach. You know, you're, we're at six minutes left in the game. Uh, two goal game, you know, it could be that uh, I, I liked Coleman's uh, attempt there to get in front, but uh, defender made a, uh, a solid play on his body and prevents his momentum. So in the moment you're thinking, don't want to lose the ball here. It's important to cash in on this possession. So good timeout. Uh, but man, Pat Riley showing up again with a huge ground ball in what otherwise could have been a disastrous play, uh, losing the ball in the middle of the field. But, uh, you know, seniors playing like he, like he wants, uh, wants to win here. And, of course, uh, all these upperclassmen you know, on both teams, um, both teams, the, the senior class is the class who, number one, were freshmen 
in the 2020 season when they uh, shut down in the middle of the year. Uh, and then the majority of them were uh, – there were then sophomores for the 2021 year, which was so odd for so many people. Uh, you know, if memory serves me right, I think Georgia Tech was able to play a handful of contests, four or five maybe. Um, that was my last year in South Carolina, and we were only able to play two contests – against uh, Clemson and um, NC State. And uh, it's very, very difficult to keep the uh, culture and um, camaraderie of teams going forward year after year when you have those kinds of gaps. And and, uh, credit to both teams and and really every team that's here at Championship Week in D1 and D2 uh, can point to their senior class for leadership and helping to maintain their cultures through very difficult circumstances for these guys in their college careers. Max Rittenmeyer forced to pass over the top of the head of Johnny Stanton. The Gamecocks give up possession with 541 in the fourth. Down by two. They got to make it happen quick. And you don't you don't want to see that coming out of a timeout. That's just unfortunate. Ob- obviously, nobody throws it away on purpose, but uh, you got to be sharp with your stick work here in the last five minutes. Sam Eck has it for the Yellow Jackets. Closing in on the final five minutes of play in the SELC tournament here in Jacksonville, Florida, Bowles School, George H. Hodges Field. Stepping to the front with room, they score. Georgia Tech extends the lead to three with 5.05 to go in the fourth. And it was Barrow once again finding the back of the net there. Brooks Barrow, junior midfielder, he's uh, he's got the almost a natural hat trick. I think uh, Pycheck had a goal in between, um, you know, a, a few of them. But but Barrow's got three of the last four, and uh, you know that's the difference in the game. He's really shown up in the fourth quarter. 5:05 to play. Faceoff coming at center field. An early start for Georgia Tech. South Carolina will get possession here. I believe that's two now on Georgia Tech. So uh, that'll that could be an interesting uh, piece to this e- end of the game. Trenton Wiley made a nice dodge there. Played it out for Javon Johnson. He'll settle it off of the bounce. Couldn't get it in his stick. And a big-time check from the Yellow Jackets. They get possession back. Here's Quarles. Pivots down the near side. Now he'll slow it up. Shot clock once again not running. And the shot clock again with a late start. So they're going to have to stop play once again to let the time run down. And it'll be reset to 60 seconds. So a full 20 seconds have gone off before the shot clock started. Four twenty-two to go in the fourth. Georgia Tech up by three. Yes, the hot hands got the rock right now. If, uh, if I'm Carolina, you know, uh, you don't want to create offense for Georgia Tech, but I'd be plus to. Well, there's a there quick shot from the Yellow Jackets and a seeing eye shot there for Alex Petrish to make the save. I, I, I like that play from Black, though, because Barrow has been shooting the ball really well. And uh, so get it out of his stick. Make somebody else make the play. And that's exactly what happens. He feeds Sam Eck. Sam Eck has a good opportunity. Ooh, bobbling, but South Carolina couldn't advance it there. Stellar defense from Georgia Tech. The Yellow Jackets get possession right back. Just a little, a uh, little bit of out of sorts for Carolina right now. Um, you'd like to see them settle in and um, just chip away one at a time, but I think they're they're feeling the the clock tick away. Get the ball back here. Ashton Wright gets it over midfield. He'll try to hold possession. Sends a pass to Johnny Stanton. 3.05 to go in the fourth. Gamecocks trail by three. And it'll be Trenton Wiley. 
Three goals, three minutes, every possession is going to be huge. Wiley steps to the far side alley, has room, heads toward the crease. Couldn't find a pass initially. Now we'll give it to Johnny Stanton. Stanton now getting checked hard. He stumbles, ball headed towards the sideline, and out of play, Georgia Tech will get it back. Yeah, they're, they're really letting them play in this fourth quarter, and, uh, you know, uh, it's been frustrating for Carolina because they it seems like uh, there have been a couple of close calls. That I, I will say I like that the referees are letting the players make the decision and not uh, throwing out ticky-tack calls. They've been consistent. Um, definitely in this second half, they've been consistent, letting the guys play. It's been pretty much the same all day, all game long. Uh, and Carolina's just uh, been a little bit out physical here in the last seven, eight minutes. Georgia Tech with possession, two minutes to go in the fourth. And it's crunch time for South Carolina. They got to force something to happen, and it's got to happen soon. By the time this shot clock would expire, if the time runs its length, it would be about a minute 20 for South Carolina. Pass comes up top. Sent to the right side, the near side. Quarles has it. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Smart by Georgia Tech to bleed the clock. And now Quarles will step down low. Looking for a man to cut. And the shot just whistles wide. 10 seconds on the shot clock. A minute 28 to go in the fourth quarter. Gamecocks trail by three. And now Georgia Tech will sacrifice possession. South Carolina will get an opportunity here with a minute 21. And again, Coach, this has got to happen as soon as possible here for the Gamecocks. Yeah, you got to go fast in order to uh, make up the gap. So we got a whistle. And now South Carolina with a minute 15. Trying to advance over midfield. Cade Leggio will get it there for the Gamecocks. He's pressured heavily. Still going. Lost possession. Sends it up top. Javon Johnson couldn't stop it up. And South Carolina sacrifices possession here with 50 seconds to go. That's tough. Really unlucky bounce. Uh, you see what Cade was doing, freshman defenseman. He's looking for his senior leader. One last ditch effort here for South Carolina. 33 seconds. They got possession back. It's Johnny Stanton. Feeds it in the middle. There for is Carson Healy. He'll rip it, and the bouncer misses. 24 seconds. Quick transition here for South Carolina. Pat Riley looking for the low shot. He misses. They get possession of the Gamecocks. 18 seconds. Coleman Smith feeds it across. Lombell couldn't field the ground ball. Final 10 seconds of play here. And a quick chance, last ditch effort for Lombell. Ball came loose, and the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets are the 2022-23 SELC champions. The Yellow Jackets with an automatic advancement to Round Rock, Texas for the national championships. Final score, 10 to seven. Georgia Tech takes down the Gamecocks. Credit Georgia Tech for really a very strong fourth quarter. Um, and Brooks Barrow was, was the guy. Brooks Barrow was, uh, you know, making it all happen for him late in the game. And after not really calling his name much all, all game, he stepped up and uh, took things into his own hands. So credit to that man, credit to the team. Uh, but a well-fought game. I mean, a, a great back and forth, um, you know, uh, interesting to see now. Uh, obviously, Georgia Tech is in the national title uh, conversation with the automatic qualifier. Uh, the Gamecocks, uh, you know, had a about a 500 season. 
um, but a lot of close losses, one and two goal losses to quality teams, and a couple of big wins, two, two wins over then number one teams in the country. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if the committee uh, thinks that they did enough to earn their way to Texas. Um, if that does happen, could we see a, re a rematch of these uh, of these two teams? Um, you know, but uh, great matchup, great great Sunday game. Uh, thanks for everybody for tuning in. Glad to, glad that you were able to watch with us. Yes, very much enjoyed having you with us once again. Nick Harvey and JD Harkey giving you all the action here live from Jacksonville, Florida. Final score for the final time: ten to seven. The Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, your 2022-23. SELC champions. We will leave you with that. Once again, Nick Harvey for JD Harkey. We enjoy we enjoyed having you with us. We hope you have a blessed Sunday.